Hey guys, in this video we're going to be going over the evolution of the Mauser rifles from the 1891 Argentine to the German 1898. So the Mauser rifle nomenclature can be a little bit confusing uh, because a lot of times the model numbers were not what Mauser sort of put the model as. It's what the countries that adopted the rifle set the model number as. So one example of this is kind of right behind me. You have the, uh, the, the M94, which was adopted in 1894. And then right underneath it, you have the model 1896. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions with the 96 is that it's a, a model of 1896. So a lot of people would look at this and then look at the 1895 and go, oh, there were different changes that happened between the Chilean 1895 and the Swedish 1896 rifle, where it really wasn't because the 1896 rifle is really just the rifle version of the M94 carbine. So we're going to go through the rifles on the table here. I'm going to show you sort of the changes that happen with each rifle. Um, mostly we're going to focus on the, the bolt um, and the action and sort of any of the features that sort of just go along with the overall handling of the rifle. So let's go through that. So starting up front, we have the Argentine 1891 Mauser, it's in 765. We have the Spanish 1893 in 7mm. We have the uh, Swedish uh, M96 long rifle here in 6.5. We have the uh, Chilean 1895 and 7 millimeter. Then here at the top, we have the uh, German 1898 and 8 millimeter. So here's the 91. Um, you can see that probably the most recognizable feature of these pre-93 rifles is this uh, five round single stack magazine that, uh, that's below the wood line. Um, it's only the pre-93 Mausers have this. So uh, if you're in the US and you see a rifle with this, uh, more than likely, it's an Argentine. Those are just the most common, but there's some other, you know, more rare models that you might run into. Um, it's the Argentine here is loaded on this uh, five-round uh, stripper clip. This is original 1895 dated uh, ammunition, and this is original uh, 1895 dated clip. So you can see that um, this is a very early, very rudimentary sort of style of, uh, of clip. Um, there's this just pretty much smooth. There's no dimples on the side of it. Um, with the 93, they sort of changed it to these, uh, added these dimples to help hold it in. And then you can see they, um, they added some sort of uh, ribs whenever they stamped the steel to um, give a little bit more strength to the overall design. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, this original clip, it reminds me a lot of this uh, Arasaka clip. So here we have a, uh, a stripper clip of five rounds of 6.5 Japanese. And really, the, the Japanese uh, stripper clip is kind of like a mixture between the, the 93 style stripper clip and the original uh, Mauser stripper clips. So the reason why the ejector box has this little protrusion that goes up over the stripper clip guide uh, is just to help hold the, uh, the stripper clip in the gun. Um, it's loaded and, and fed in just like a, just like a normal Mauser rifle, just kind of like all of them. Um, this feature was introduced with the, uh, with the 1889 Belgian, and it um, sort of carries over through all the later Mausers. Disassembles the same exact way, pull that apart. You can tell immediately that this bolt is a lot different than later Mauser bolts. Um, first off, there's no big extractor on the side. Instead, with these early Mausers, it just has a really small um, extractor right here. Um, Mauser, of course, beefed this up in later models, but in these early ones, it's just this, this small uh, extractor here. Uh, the Mauser bolt, you actually need a, a tool in order to dis disassemble it or like a coin or something like that. Um, it doesn't have the middle safety takedown position as the, uh, as the early Mausers do. So taking this bolt apart is um, it's a lot more difficult than the later Mausers. The gun is a cock on close design, which means you push against uh, spring tension whenever you close the bolt. And boy, does this have some spring tension to it. It can be decocked on closing like the later Mausers. Uh, you just pull the trigger, push this all the way in, and then it takes a little bit of force, but then you just close that bolt there. And uh, that, way it, uh, that way you can close the bolt without it being cocked. Now this is one of the few Mausers 
that you can actually, with it decocked, you can put the safety on. So that's kind of a neat feature. Um, however, there is no middle, um, middle sort of safe notch there. Um, on the later Mausers, if you put the flag safety up like this, you could still work the bolt. But uh, on this design, there is no middle safety. It's either safety on or safety off. So the 93 introduced this flush fitting uh, five round staggered box magazine. So with having the rounds sort of uh, double stacked instead of single stacked, um, you don't need to have that uh, magazine protruding out the bottom. So this was easier to produce. It's just an overall uh, better design. Uh, you don't have to worry about the magazine getting damaged or anything by sticking out of the bottom. And it's nice and a nice slim compact design. This new rifle was chambered in the fantastic 7mm Mauser cartridge. This is probably one of my most favorite cartridges of all time. Um, it's just a great performing, great shooting uh, cartridge that has been... Um, this cartridge has really been copied or emulated in a lot of other cartridge designs. You can see a lot of changes that happened to the design here, going from the 91 to the 93. We can see the ejector box doesn't have that protrusion anymore. They, uh, they sort of improved the, the stripper clip guide in here so that this guide can hold the clip on its own. It doesn't really need that, uh, the help of the ejector box anymore, which is nice because now this is uh, just for the disassembly of the rifle. The safety, you cannot put it on whenever the, the rifle is decocked. You can only put it on whenever the rifle is cocked. It is a cock and close design as well. And we can see the cocking piece protruding out the back. Now we can put the safety on and here we see that really amazing top safety position for disassembling the bolt. Uh, it also serves as a nice visual indicator whenever you're sort of looking over the gun. You can't really see the sight because this is in the way letting you know that the safety's on. However, when the, when the safety's up, you can operate the bolt, which is really nice if you want to just sort of play around loading some rounds and you want to be safe. You can just put the safety on here and you can still work the bolt. If you move it over to the far right, that locks the bolt and makes the gun safe, so you don't have to worry about any sort of accidental discharges. So probably the biggest difference between the 91 and the 93 bolt is this, the addition of this nice large extractor here on the top. Um, this was just it's a fantastic feature of the Mauser rifles that you see on all the uh, all the following models. It's nice and strong. Um, sort of the the harder you pull on it, the the harder it grips a, a stuck case. Um, usually a case uh, will get, uh, the, the case rim will get ripped off before, before this thing will fail. Also, the Mauser bolt no longer needs tools to be disassembled. Um, whenever it's in this top position, uh, it just simply unscrews for disassembly, which is really nice. Um, it's very similar with all the, um, all the following models. One of the bigger differences between the 93 bolts and the following bolts that I'll show you here is that the bottom of this Mauser bolt, it's squared off. Um, Mauser initially did this because going from the single stack to the double stack magazine, he thought that this would help to improve reliability. Um, and I, I'm sure it does, but it's not really needed. And this was actually dropped in all, um, in all models after the, the 93. A couple other models I think have this bottom, like the Brazilian 94 I think has this. Um, but this, you don't really see this on many other Mauser rifles because it's not really necessary. Um, so later models, you'll just see a nice circular bolt face. Now in an attempt to fix some of the bolt wobble that's present on these early Mausers, um, in this sort of uh, receiver guide here, uh, they added this guide rib. So I don't know if you can see this really thin, right above my uh, fingernail there, this really thin guide rib. Um, that fits right in this little groove here. Uh, this groove was already there for the extractor to go through, or for, I mean, for the ejector to go through. So really adding this uh, guide rib in there, it doesn't really add that much mach extra machining to the bolt, but it does sort of help with some of the bolt wobble. So here you can see inside the 91, it's just a smooth guide there. Um, it lacks that extra guide rib. And if you think this gun is dirty now, you should have seen it when I bought it. Now here we have the Chilean 1895. It is virtually identical to the uh, Spanish 1893 uh, with just a couple exceptions like the receiver markings here, a couple changes uh, to the bolt and receiver that I'll touch on. Um, but pretty much the Chileans saw the Spanish 1893 and just said, hey, give us that. That's, that's pretty much exactly what we, what we want. And, and that's what they got here. I'll take the bolt out and show you a couple of those. 
Um, first off, we can see the guide rib that's machined in here. It's exactly the same as on the Mauser 93, just to help uh, eliminate some of the wobble. Um, here's one of my favorite changes uh, that happened on the 95 is this little uh, extension here out of the receiver. Uh, this is just part of the receiver that, that sticks up. And actually, whenever you close the bolt, um, it acts like a little safety lug. So it's sort of a real primitive third, third lug for the, for the Mauser rifle. The extractor is pretty much identical. Most of the bolt body is identical. Um, just about the only difference between the 95 and the 93 uh, bolt is that this, uh, this bolt face here, it's rounded. It doesn't have the square bottom because it's not necessary and it was eliminated on later models. But really just about everything else is the same, the same sort of checkering on the safety as the earlier models. Um, same thing, uh, you can't disassemble this gun, um, pretty much any of the Mausers whenever the safety is off. Um, if you were at this point and you wanted to disassemble the bolt, you'd have to sort of put the bolt uh, back in the gun, put the safety in the up position, and then take it back out. That's kind of the fastest way and easiest way to do it. But as of right now, it's locked. Now here comes the Swedish M96 rifle. And, and it's chambered in the amazing 6.5 Swede. Um, the stripper clips are pretty much identical uh, in the Swedish and then the, the other sort of uh, stripper clips and the other rifles. Um, I mean, you could, you could almost get these, get these rounds mixed up. They look so similar. Um, I have a video shooting and comparing these two cartridges through the, through the 96 and 1895 if you want to check that out. So the, the Swedish M96 here um, it's actually the same exact model as the earlier M94 Swedish carbine. So uh, calling this an 1896 is kind of a misnomer because it's really a model of 1894. You know, it's kind of one of those things where uh, the, the, the year designation on this, the 96 and 94, it's, it's from whenever uh, Sweden adopted it. So it doesn't really have to do with the model designation. Anyway. The Swedes actually made a, a good number of improvements to their, to their Swedish rifle. They were very hands-on with the development and the procurement process and the, the testing and everything of, of their Mauser rifles. So they sort of made these, uh, these, these big demands that they wanted to have incorporated in their rifle. Mauser was happy to oblige. And so you see here um, quite a few differences already between the two other guns. So there's lots to cover here, actually, the, the changes that the Swedes wanted. Um, I'll start here at the front. So there's this little gas vent hole in the front of the bolt. And uh, that is not present on the 1895 or 1893 bolts. Uh, but that's for if you have a, a ruptured case in the chamber. So if the, uh, the, you know, the, the brass cartridges were pretty primitive back then, and if you had a case get ruptured, um, this gas vent hole would sort of uh, vent the gas sort of away from the shooter's face. Um, it was a nice little uh, safety feature that you see added on later uh, Mauser models. Uh, then right here, I don't know if you could tell, but the extractor is, has been sort of straightened. Here's the, here's the 1895 bolt. So the Mauser extractor is straightened here, and it was straightened to accommodate that little piece of metal underneath. I'll lift the bolt up to show you what that is. So this is the new and improved guide rib. So no longer is there the guide rib machined inside of the rail. Instead, this rib fits into a groove in the top of this receiver bridge right here. So whenever you're moving or manipulating the bolt, and it's about at this position, this guide rib is helping to stabilize it quite a bit. Now once you kind of get past it to like this point, you can kind of see some of the bolt wobble again. And the Swedes, they wanted this little extension put on the follower here. So this prevents blind firing. So, um, so if somebody's cycling the bolt and not keeping track of their rounds, say in combat, um, they won't close the bolt uh, on an empty magazine and, and essentially shoot nothing. Um, if you try to chamber the bolt and the magazine's empty, that will stop you and it'll let you know it's time to reload. It's a cock on close design, just like the earlier models. Um, you'll see the biggest difference here is this extension was put on the cocking piece so that whenever the cocking piece is, is decocked, there still is a little protrusion and it's checkered on top. Now officially, uh, I think this was meant so that you could cock the gun with this piece. Um, I don't think that's humanly possible, but what it does make is a nice way of actually decocking the gun. So if you had the gun cocked, 
You could sort of grip this, pull the trigger, and slowly let this down if you wanted to. Um, I, I heard that they developed little pieces to go in here, like leather or wood pieces, that could fit in there to prevent dry firing of the gun. Um, although these guns are perfectly safe to dry fire. Just like the 1891, the Swedish Mausers can be put on safe while the gun is decocked. I think that's a really nice feature. Of course, up is the, uh, the disassembly. And just to show you here, so this top one, this is an M94 carbine. You can see the Waffen Fabric Mauser Obendorf 1895. So this was made at Obendorf in Germany in 1895. Uh, the very first Swedish Mausers were made by Oberndorf in Germany, and then later on, our Carl Gustav took over production, and then uh, eventually Husqvarna. Um, but you can see here in this early 94 carbine, made in 1895, that it does have all of these features as the later uh, Swedish Mausers, and also it has all these features that are lacking on the Chilean 1895. Now between the 94 and the 96 adoption, uh, Mauser actually patented and came out with a lot of improvements to the Mauser action that they asked Sweden if they wanted to incorporate on their M96 series of rifles. However, it would make the M96 rifle and parts not compatible with the M94 carbines. So Sweden actually turned down those upgrades and they decided to keep with their, uh, their original M94 design rifles. So that leads into the next and final rifle in the line. So now we end up here with the German 1898. Um, this is sort of referred to by most people as the pinnacle of the Mauser rifles. Um, a lot of the big design changes that uh, Mauser patented in 1895 um, that was put into the 1898 rifle here. Uh, a lot of these features, you could see them in, the, uh, in Germany's 1896 Mauser trial rifles. So these features, although it's sort of first to come out on the 1898 rifle, they're not necessarily features that came out in 1898. They were just incorporated on the German 1898 rifle. So now some of these features include this new uh, large receiver ring here. So this is a, is a thicker uh, receiver ring. Um, it's just meant to be a little bit more sturdy and strong of an action. No longer does the wood go all the way uh, to the front of the receiver. Um, it now just goes up to the rear sight here. Of course, have this pretty ridiculous rear sight on the Gewehr 98s, but they do look pretty cool. So you can see the hole in the trigger guard here that's not put on the previous Mauser rifles. Um, this is actually for their little, uh, it's a pretty neat little quick detach sling setup. So uh, whenever you want to have this gun in the pre parade sling style, um, you would just put it on here and of course spin this around. Um, there's also this little attachment point out back, so if you just want it for regular carry, you could then attach the sling there. So the biggest change to the 98 action is the departure from the cock on close to now the cock on open. So whenever I lift this up, you will see the cocking piece stick out. So now it's actually cocked. There's a nice camming action in the bolt for extracting, and it's a nice smooth action here on out. And you don't actually have to fight that spring pressure like you did on the cock on close Mausers. It's just a real uh, slight effort to just get this thing closed, uh, unlike previous models. You can see the extractor here is the same as on the Swedish Mausers. Also that guide rib that's on top here is the same um, as on the Swedish Mausers and it works exactly the same to eliminate as much bolt wobble as possible. Now the 98 here, it has this new little raised circular piece that goes around the bolt sleeve here. Now you do not see that on the pre previous Mauser models. Um, you just see kind of like a very slim sort of bolt sleeve. Here on the Mauser 98, it looks a lot more bulky. And this is actually just to stop escaping gases from traveling along the channel and going straight back into the shooter's face. This sort of would block any sort of gas that somehow escaped and made it all the way down here. That would block it and sort of push it away from the shooter. Now you do not see a gas vent hole up top like on the Swedish Mauser. Instead, they moved it to the bottom of the bolt. So if a cartridge were to rupture in the chamber, any sort of gases that went down into the primer pocket would then be vented out of these nice two big holes down into the magazine. Also see the thumb cutout here on the 98 for, uh, for faster loading. Another big change made to the 98 Mauser is this bolt sleeve lock. So now what this lock does pretty much is it holds the bolt 
in place so that the, the sleeve doesn't rotate on its own. Because right now, with the safety in this up position, the bolt really just rotates. Uh, and depending on how smooth the bolt is, it can really sort of um, just sort of sling over. So what can happen is whenever you're working the action on a pre-98 bolt and you have this safety in the up position, is that this bolt head can rotate and then when you're trying to close the rifle, it'll actually stop up the rifle. And it really doesn't take that much of a rotation for it to stop up the rifle, but this is just, it's not a really good uh, design. It was something that they really needed to be fixed and that was fixed with the bolt sleeve lock. So the bolt sleeve lock here, you just simply press it and then you can just rotate the bolt and then it comes off as normal. It's really a great feature and it only adds sort of two parts, just the, uh, the sleeve lock and the little spring inside of it. And uh, it doesn't really slow down you from disassembling the gun. Um, it's just a really nice overall feature to have. Now Mauser Rifle Evolution, it didn't stop with the 1898. Of course, there's many models that came after the 1898, but most of those models, with few exceptions, kind of like the, the Yugo M48s, uh, most of those are exact copies of the 98 and are actually interchangeable with Mauser 98 uh, parts. So um, this was really sort of the design, the bolt design that everybody um, sort of emulated in future Mauser designs. So, so after the 1898, whenever you see Mausers coming out of other countries, uh, especially in like the 1920s and 30s, you see a lot of them pretty much just straight up copying the, the 98 action. Uh, Belgium eventually moves away from their 1898s and they sort of copy the 98 action. Um, you see Austria sort of doing the same, Czechoslovakia of course with the, uh, the VZ-24 rifles. Um, this has sort of just been the definitive Mauser action you know, of the, of the 20th century. And, uh, and for good reason, it's, it's a really, it's a great rifle. It's a nice piece of history. Um, so there you go, guys. Um, this video went a lot longer than I thought it would. I, I, in my head, I didn't think it would take this long to, uh, to, to sort of say everything that I wanted to say about these guns. If you watched to this point, thank you for your patience and your time. Um, click the links in the description below if you like, uh, if you like supporting channels that do stuff like this. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.